Thank you. Um, the topic here is lanthanides. Why do we care? Um, my four points, the four takeaways, I'll give you right at the beginning. First, uh, the title of my talk, I think, says uh, lanthanides and batteries. Well, it is not just about batteries. It is about the entire high technology sector, and in particular, high technology automobiles. Second point, China controls the global market in lanthanides. Third, from a business standpoint, there is no more opaque uh, market than the one for the lanthanides, which uh, I'll, get in, I'll discuss further in just a moment, but from a business school kind of standpoint, from a understanding of how markets work, this is uh, a really fascinating uh, example uh, and one that really no one knows how it's going to work out. Um, and uh, that's the preface of my fourth one. No one going forward now, as the lanthanides are more in the news, no one knows exactly what is going to happen in the next three to five to ten years, given China's control of the market and the fact that there are no other market players that can really come into the market with any kind of measure, uh, with any kind of significant supply to uh, uh, make a significant change in the overall balance of trade regarding the lanthanides. Now, uh, you all have a copy of my book. Uh, if you look in the notebook as well, there is a reproduction of the periodic table. Um, and there is the, at the bottom of that periodic table, the second to bottom row is the lanthanides. Um, there are 15 elements uh, on the lanthanides row of the periodic table. Um, but to be clear, um, as I, my, I said uh, initially, this is not just about uh, cars, it's about entire high technology sector. I have an iPhone uh, uh, and I've done the research. This has at least three lanthanides in it, europium, terbium, and dysprosium. It may have several others, uh, uh, but, and, and your cell phone may be slightly different, but essentially this, this microphone uh, may have uh, samarium in it. Um, these, tech, these elements are ubiquitous in high technology and co from computers to everything else. Why do we care when it comes to automobiles? Well, let's look at the Prius. And, and further, let's look at this with regard to what uh, President Obama just uh, decreed the other day, which was these dramatic increases in mileage standards uh, for uh, the United States fleet going up, I believe, to 35 miles per gallon. Well, that's an ambitious goal, and it may well be laudable, but the key question is, will there be sufficient quantities of the lanthanides, also known as rare earth elements, in order to produce the quantity of hybrid electric vehicles that are going to be needed to meet the mileage standards that Obama has set out. The Prius, and these aren't numbers, this isn't is data that I got from Toyota, it's publicly available data. The Prius contains cerium, lanthanum, neodymium, praseodymium, dysprosium, terbium, yttrium, and europium. By the best estimates, the, the, the Prius is considered the most rare earth intensive consumer product ever made. Each Prius contains about 25 pounds of rare earth elements. That's more than twice as much as is contained in a standard vehicle. Um, Okay, so why do we care? Well, obviously, uh, high technology is the growing business, um, but more importantly, the entire high-tech world, when you think about it, what are, the, what are the qualities, what are the properties that are the drivers of high technology? They are magnetism, fluorescence, phosphorescence, catalysis, polishing, tinting, and alloys. All of those depend, in one way or another, on the lanthanides. And that, again, is the punchline. China controls, depending on whose numbers you believe, between 95% and 100% of this entire row of the periodic table. It's unprecedented, their control of this market. No other set of strategic commodities in the global economy is controlled in such a total uh, way as the lanthanides are controlled now by the Chinese. So what are, what are the numbers here? Well, according to Roskill Consulting, firm that tracks rare earth elements, demand for, uh, uh, for the lanthanides could outstrip supply by as soon as 2013. 
Um, what are the possibilities? Well, I'll talk about Molly Corp more in just a moment, but in, in the big picture and looking at this market, and, and I have a chapter about it in my book, but I don't get into too much about Molly Corp, but Molly Corp is, has a mine in Mountain Pass, which is about 200 miles northeast of here. They apparently have the best quality ore body of any location on the planet. Now, they face a lot of, of environmental controls, particularly being here in California, but uh, the uh, Molly Corp was purchased uh, out of Chevron when Chevron bought Unical. Unical owned uh, Molly Corp, uh, and now Molly Corp is owned by Goldman Sachs and a couple of other venture capital firms, and they are trying to ramp up production as soon as they can. They are not mining now, they are uh, refining their stockpile. But I talked to their CTO the other day, John Burba. He told me that Molly Corp now has letters in hand uh, of intent to buy 145% of their, their production once they get up and running. Um, okay, so why does this matter again? Well, China is, is reducing their exports of rare earth elements. They are also increasing the export fees on the remaining amounts of, of lanthanides that they are exporting. Meanwhile, the Chinese are encouraging the companies that use lanthanides to locate in China. This makes perfect sense from a strategic standpoint, from an employment standpoint, from a balance of trade standpoint. The Chinese don't want to sell you the rare earth elements that are needed to make the television. They want to sell you the television. Makes perfect sense from their standpoint. Um, one of the peculiarities, though, about this market is that these are high value commodities. And what happens with high value commodities? The smuggling, right? Look at the, the uh, illegal drug trade. There's plenty of evidence of that. I have a reference in the handout there to a, a report that came out of the Institute for the Analysis of Global Security by an author named Hearst. That, that paper estimates that uh, about 20,000 tons of rare earth elements are smuggled out of China every year. That amounts to about 20% of the global market in lanthanides today, which is about 100,000 tons. So why are the lanthanides important? What is it about this row of the periodic table, these elements, that makes them so valuable? Well, I'm not a chemist. Fortunately, my father-in-law is, and I've talked with him about this many times, and I've also talked to other people. This is, uh, this, the, the qualities of the lanthanides are important because it goes down to the quantum mechanic, uh, the quantum mechanics level. It, and specifically, it's the electron density around the nucleus of the lanthanides that gives them these special properties. Um, and it's the configuration, really, of their electron, electron shells and how they inter interact with other elements that give them specific uh, characteristics for magnetism that you cannot find in any other elements. Um, let me talk about the business case now. Um, I've written a lot about the oil market. I, uh, my last book, Gusher of Lies, The Dangerous Delusion of, of Energy Independence, I talk about the interdependence of the global economy. And in particular, I talk about this idea of the oil market, and this, there was a big push politically here in the US, and it's still ongoing today, and you're familiar with it, the demonization of foreign oil. This is Boone Pickens' whole thing. Well, we gotta quit foreign oil, you know, causes terrorism, it's dirty, et cetera, et cetera. You've heard this. Okay, well, let's compare the oil market to the market for lanthanides. In 2007, there were, or there were 21, I'm sorry, in 2008, 21 different countries that produced a million barrels of crude or more per day. In 2008, the U.S. imported oil or oil products from 90 different countries. We exported oil or oil products to customers in about 70 countries. There is no more global, no, no more transparent, no more liquid market in human history than today's global oil market. Now let's compare that with the lanthanides where essentially all of the market is controlled by one market player. There is no price transparency. There is no clearinghouse. There is no regulation. Smuggling is a major portion of the entire global marketplace. And going forward, there are no significant supplies that can come on stream in anything close to the market, to the time span that the market needs.